Change in your life is a change in the inner game. Ultimately, if you're gonna have lasting change in anything, you're really talking about just raising your standards. I mean, I always tell people, if you wanna know how to change your life, I give it to you in three words, boring as it sounds, raise your standards. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on, I, I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should make more calls, I should respond more rapidly to my email, whatever, you know? Whatever your should list is, people love to have their should list make, be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions. If it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, eh, it's a little disappointing, but you kind of know it's not gonna happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm gonna find the way or I'm gonna make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard and they make it a must, they find the way. Haven't you had some area of your life where you raise your standard and your life has never been the same? Maybe at one time in your life you smoked cigarettes or you did something and you did it for years and you kept trying to change it, trying to change it and kept telling yourself I should. And then one day something happened. Something just clicked you over. Something took you over that kind of tipping point. And inside yourself you said no more. And it was a very, very different experience, wasn't it? Something inside of you shifted and what was a should became a must and you've never gone back. Because somewhere when we make this click, when we make something a must, we attach ourselves to it. It becomes part of our identity. Most people, if they really look at how they're living their life today, it's based on a set of standards, a set of beliefs that they made choices about 10, 20, 30 or more years ago. I mean, very often we made decisions in our youth or very young about what to believe, about what we were capable of, about who we are as a person, and that becomes the glass ceiling, if you will, that controls us. Take a look at any place you've got a limitation and ask yourself, when did I decide to accept that limitation? And you may not even see it as a limitation. You might see it as just, that's who I am. But so often in our lives, we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people will like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. Joy comes when you're spontaneous. It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not being yourself. And most of us have no clue who we are. And so a big part of my work, if you've ever been to an event, you know, is to get people to do things spontaneously without thinking, because that's when the real you shows up. That's when the energy comes alive. And when you do that, when you start to connect to your true nature, suddenly there's energy available for you to set a higher standard for what you want in your life. So the secret to real happiness is progress. Progress equals happiness. And if we can make progress on a regular basis, we feel alive. And that's why at the beginning of the year, we get this thing like, okay, I can have this fresh start. I can really do what my soul desires. I can expand, I can grow, I can improve, I can change. Or maybe better than change, I could progress. You gotta say, I gotta take control of this process and not just hope it's gonna work out like people do who make a resolution. Think about that. Progress is an aliveness to it, doesn't it? You don't have to work at changing. People say all the time, now, well, I'm, I'm working on changing. Don't worry about it. You don't have to work on changing. Change is automatic. Your body's gonna change whether you want it or not as the years go by. And no matter how hard you work, there's gonna be some changes going on there. The economy is gonna change no matter what you want it to do. The weather is gonna change. Relationships are gonna change. Everything in life is always changing. We don't have to work on change. Change is automatic, but progress is not. So if you wanna make real progress, then you really gotta look at your life in a different way. But one of the most important decisions you make in business is, ultimately, if I was gonna sell this, if I chose to, I have to know who what I sell this to so that I have long-term value, not just an income along the way, I have this critical mass hit. I get a multiple of my business. And most people don't have a clear exit strategy. They think I'll come up with that someday. You gotta start with that end in mind. That's gotta be part of your focus if you're gonna be successful in your business. Whenever people fail to achieve their goals 99.9% .9 of the time, and you ask them why, they'll tell you it's because of a lack of resources. That's what all these things are. I didn't have the support, right? I didn't have the money, we didn't have the time, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. There's a resource that people believe is missing. And that resource, belief structure, then keeps people from ever being able to really lead. Because what leaders do is they find a way to maximize whatever resources they have, as little as they may be, and they don't believe in limited resources. Resources are interesting, but the ultimate resources are the feelings of emotion that make you resourceful.
Success and failure are not giant events. They don't just show up. You don't just suddenly become successful or suddenly have this cataclysmic event that makes you fail. It may look that way, but failure comes from all the little things. It's failure to make the call. It's failure to check the books. It's failure to say, I'm sorry. It's failure to push yourself to do things physically that you don't want to do. And all those little failures day after day come together until one day some cataclysmic event happens and you blame that. That event happened because you missed all the little stuff. Do you agree with me? And success, by the way, is not some overnight event. It's all these little things. Success is having a vision. Success is making it compelling. Success is really seeing it and feeling it every day with strong enough reasons. Success is feeling the sense that I'm here to grow and I'm here to give something to the world more than just myself. All the little stuff. That's where success comes from. But when you decide what's most important to you, your brain goes after it. Clarity is power. You gotta know the specific result you're after. What do you want? If you can't answer that question right now in your personal life, in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, in your spirituality, then you're not gonna be as fulfilled as you wanna be. If you don't know exactly what you want or you let yourself get beyond that into something general, you're not gonna achieve it. What are the rituals that have put me there? Because whatever results you're getting, even if you don't like the results, there's some rituals that are keeping you in that place. There's some rituals of what you eat or don't eat, how you move or don't move, how you sleep or don't sleep. There's some rituals in the lack of variety or spice or energy or focus in an area. Just write the truth of where you are. What do you want? What's your vision? And be really specific. I wanna be my fighting weight. I wanna be the strongest I've ever felt. I wanna be, I'm gonna turn my, whatever it is, be specific. You don't just get a result without some kind of action, without some form of ritual. Ritual meaning actions you do consistently. What are the rituals that'll get you there? What would you need to do differently each morning if you're gonna be that kind of energy, that kind of strength? How would you have to, how often would you work out? What days would you work out? What time? A ritual is something you do consistently, usually at a specific time, so it becomes automatic. Will Bauer doesn't last, but rituals can last a lifetime. I bet you have some rituals in your life right now you've been doing for years, even though some of them don't serve you. I'm just saying, wake yourself up. Make, if you want a new year and a new life, you don't need to start on January 1st. Start today and just begin to see what happens and see how easy it is to just do a few little rituals. Don't do them all, just do two or three new things. And you know what happens? You'll get momentum. Because once you discipline yourself in one area of your life, you feel yourself doing it in other areas as well. There's always two pains in life. There's the pain of discipline or there's the pain of regret. And discipline weighs ounces, as my friend Jim Rohn taught me. Regret weighs tons. You don't have regret. So right now, what do you want to change? What's it really like? What are the rituals that got you there? That'll take a little homework. If you're not sure, ask the people around you. They'll tell you what your rituals are. What do I really want in depth? What are the rituals that'll get me there? And then get yourself to start a few of those actions and lock them in place. Here's what I've created for my life and anyone I know succeeded. I'm a 17-year-old kid from Azusa, California with no real education other than self-education, with no background, with, with no money. But I did one thing. I love people and I had an enormous demand I made upon myself and I sculpted my mind and my emotions to get me to do whatever it would take to achieve and to contribute. But to do that, I did it by using my body and changing my focus. I did it by putting myself in a peak physiology and using what I call incantations. So starting when I was 17, I started doing incantations, not affirmations. Affirmation, you go, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. What's the problem? You haven't changed your what? Physiology. If you don't change your physiology, you won't get anything. So an incantation is not only you speak it, but you embody what you're saying with all the intensity you can. And you do it with enough repetitions that it sticks in your head. Like it's a small world, now the conversation in your head is always the same and it gives you what you want. So you use your body and your voice. I will do something that I still do backstage and have done for 23 years. Because I don't hope I'm going to be in a good state. I demand it. So I do an incantation using my whole body. I'd say, I now command my subconscious mind to direct me in helping as many people as possible alive today to better their lives by giving me the strength, the emotion, the persuasion, the humor, the brevity, whatever it takes to show these people and get these people to change their lives now. Human beings absolutely follow through on who they believe they are. If you define yourself as somebody who is really conservative, you're not gonna be crazy and act nuts unless you're really drunk or something and then you can say it's the alcohol when it's really just you finally getting permission to be yourself, the alcohol is your excuse. 
if you're a really crazy person, you act crazy, outrageous, playful. You don't act conservative because it's not who you are. 